All right, let's go through this together. Um, first, we want to factor x squared minus 64. Um, you may recognize it as a difference of squares, and a difference of squares factors as the square root of the first plus the square root of the second uh, times the square root of the first times the square root, or minus the square root of the second. Or, just to kind of like, it's almost to reteach it again, um, we have this middle term of 0x, okay, and it's as easy as factoring this out, right? Um, what numbers multiply to negative 64 and add to nothing? Um, well, they obviously have to be positive and negative to be a negative 64, and they have to be um, exactly the same as each other, like in the, the size of this number has to be the same, because uh, when you multiply it out, you're going to have to have opposites that cancel out to get 0x. So. Eight. All right. If we want to test this out, we got eight. Yeah, x times x is x squared. X times negative eight is negative eight x. Eight times x is eight x. Eight times negative eight is negative sixty-four. There we go. And the eight x and the negative eight x cancel each other out, and we're left with x squared minus sixty-four. So x plus eight times x minus eight. All right. So here's what we call a system of equations. Remember, a system of equations is just a a lot of equations in one place at one time. We hope that the system has a solution. Okay. All right, so again, we hope that this system has a solution. What does it mean to have a solution? Maybe it has lots of solutions. Well, if there is a solution to the system of equations, okay, then that means that the same x, y, and z works in all of them. Or if there's an x, y, z, a, b, c, then the same x, y, z, a, b, c would work in all of the equations. Okay, so is this a solution to this system? Well, we just have to plug it in and find out. So we'll plug in 12, and then we do, uh, oh, I was supposed to put a plus 5 times negative 9, minus 15 times 1 third equals negative 26. We get 24 minus 45 minus 5, right? We're hoping it equals negative 26 here. Um, 24 minus 50, that does equal negative 26. So good, that's good. Let's try the next one. 3 times 12 um, minus 3 times negative 9 plus 9 times 1 third. We hope... We're hoping that it gets us negative 66. So let's see. 36 plus 27 plus 3. That doesn't look good. Uh, let's see. You get 50, 63 plus 3 is 66. It's positive 66, but that's not the same as negative 66. So it worked here, didn't work here. It doesn't matter if it works here or not. It didn't work in the second equation, so no, it's not a solution to the system. It is a solution. This is a solution. This x, y, and z is a solution to this equation. Maybe it's a solution to this equation. I'm not going to bother to look at it because it's, we're, we're asked if it's a solution to the system of equations. Okay, a system is just a bunch of equations. The solution just works in all of the equations. Okay, solve using factoring. Remember, it's very important that it equals 0 on one side. So we first we want to consolidate everything on one side. Okay, now we want to factor it. Uh, first, we're going to factor out a common factor. Then we'll factor this guy here. Move it up here. 3 times x squared. 3 times, uh, excuse me, that's not what I wanted. Ugh. I did want this. I did not want that square. Okay. Well, I know my x times x is going to give me x squared. What's going to multiply to negative 15 and add to negative 2? So negative 5 and 3. Uh, double checking. Yes, that is working. Remember this very important thing here. If you're just going to say x is 5 and x is negative 3, okay, fine. We got the answer. That's great. Um, but soon, the time will come, very soon, when um, just taking this and, and putting 5 and putting the opposite of, of 3 and saying an answer is negative 3, it's just not going to get the job done. All right. So don't worry about trying to shortcut your way out of things. Let's think about this. we got a 
number times another number times a third number. Right? These are three different numbers multiplied together, and the result was zero. It's almost like a crime scene where uh, we know something happened. The zero happened, right? So who who done it? What happened here? Well, fine detective that I am, I know that the only way that you can multiply numbers together and get zero is to have multiplied by zero. So I point my finger at x plus three and say, ha ha, you probably were equal to zero. And if you weren't, or if you weren't, x minus five would have to be equal to zero. Got to be one of those two things, all right? And uh, if we were to accuse three of being zero, he would just say, well, no, I'm three, I'm not zero. So that couldn't be it. But x minus five, that quantity could be zero if x is five. And this quantity could be zero if x is negative three. All right, let's just test one of these out. Let's test out negative three. Three times, we put negative three in here for x. Negative three for x. Yeah, three times negative eight times zero. And that does make zero. And that's the only way that can happen. We have to have multiplied by zero. Right, if we plug in five, this one will be zero, and the rest will be whatever. We'll get it multiplied by zero and be zero. Right, I'm going to factor this expression. Remember the, uh, the first rule. The first rule of factoring quadratics would be to find, or any polynomial, is to find a common factor among everybody. So all of these have a factor of four in them. So we take the four out, we're left with x squared plus seven x plus 12. All right, now we just factor this part, we can just kind of ignore this for a minute, like not ignore it, like delete it, but we don't have to pay attention to it when we're factoring this. We just need like two parentheses and multiply together and that give us this back, right? So four times what? Okay, so I'm gonna x times x to get x squared. I'm gonna something times something to get 12. Those that something times something that always has to add up to seven. So, um, 6 times 2, that's 12, but that doesn't add to 7. 12 times 1, no. 3 and 4, yes. 3 times 4 is 12. 3 plus 4 is 7. So this, yeah, that's what I put right there. That's the factored form. Okay, we're going to factor this, and we're going to use that factorization to solve the equation. Um, so x and x. Uh, x times x is going to be that x squared. Something times something is going to give me that 49. And then when I add those two things together, I'm going to get negative 14, right? Negative times negative is positive. Negative plus negative is negative. Uh, must be 7 and 7. Okay. So we can set x minus 7 equal to 0, and we can do it again. But then we find, like, oh, that's kind of silly. I don't have to do that twice. I just get a, a, a solution of 7. That's it. Uh, I could write 7 again, but it would just be kind of repetitive. Graph the system of inequalities. Let's start with that. Right. Uh, remember, let's, if you're having trouble remembering this at all, just think about this. Y equals 3 halves x minus 6. So it's y equals, not y is less than, y not y is greater than, y is equal to. Okay. Um, so let's just graph what this would produce, what graph this would produce. It would be a line at uh, y-intercept of negative 6, so negative 6, and a slope of 3 halves, 1, 2, 3, and over 2. Okay. Um, now let's just, you know, connect it with a, a, a straight uh, solid line. Let's see. let's see what's up with that. Well, what does a line like this represent? That's made of an infinite number of points, all these points make up this line, and any point that I take, say this one, at x comma y, I take that x and put it there, put that y, put it there, right, I'm going to get it, I'm going to get the same thing on both sides, it's going to be equal on both sides. That is the nature of a, a graph, right, a graph is all the points that makes both sides of the equation true. Let's take an example. Maybe that you know didn't quite take hold. Let's see. We go up three over two, up three over two. Up th let's take this point. Where's this point? Let's follow the slope up to this point. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three. Okay. Um, so I'll plug in six for x. Three halves times that. Uh, 
uh, 3 for y. 3 equals 2 cancels with uh, 6, so leaves with 3. 3 times 3 is 9. Minus 6, 3 equals 3. A big surprise. That's the nature of a graph, like we said. Uh, any point on that put into the equation that it came from makes both sides true. But here's the problem. Remember how I said, let's tr just treat it like uh, an equation, but it wasn't an equation. It's an inequality. This side's greater than that side. Um, so 3 is not greater than 3. That's not true. right? All the points on this line make this false because it makes both sides the same. It does not have a little equals to there. Okay. So how did we deal that? Remember how we dealt with that? We said, oh, I should have graphed this as a dotted line because these are close to being solutions that work, uh, but they're not. They don't work. They make both sides equal. But if both sides are equal, in this case, this, that would be false if both sides were equal because one side's supposed to be greater than the other side. Okay. Let's take that 0.63 again. 6.3. If we plug in 6 for x and 3 for y, we get both sides are the same. Let's look at this point here, and uh, maybe this point here. Right. Uh, just picking some semi-random points here. So this is 6 comma 9. This is 6 comma negative 3. Okay, it could have easily have been 6 negative 4, 6 negative 5, 6 0, 6 negative 1, whatever. And this could have been 6 9, 6 10, 6 7, whatever. Just some point. Uh, where, where x is the same as this x, but the y is different. All right, let's see which one of these makes this true. Let's plug this guy in here. Negative 3 greater than 3 halves times, uh, what are we going to get on this right side? I bet you won't be surprised by this. We're going to get 2 cancel with 3. 3 times 3 is 9. Minus 6, we get 3. Of course we get 3. That's what happens when you plug in 6 into this side. You get 3 on this side. On this side, you get negative 3. Is that true? Is negative 3 greater than 3? No, it's not. Right? That can't be right. That can't be uh, a solution. What about 9? Well, we're going to plug in 6 for x again. We're still going to get 3 over here. But we can put a 9 here, a 9 here, a 9 here. That is true. right? So this point does uh, solve. It does satisfy this inequality. And so... Um, so would this one, because the x is 6 still, but the y is 8. And this one would work too, because the y is 7, and so on. Like, all these y values, if you, if you plug them in over here with a 6 on this side, you'll always get a 3 when you plug in 6. The y value is going to be greater, as long as we pick a point that is what? Above this point, right? All of these rules shade in all of these points. All these points work, right? Well, what about this point? This random point. Uh, well, whatever the x is, as long as the y is bigger than the y that's on the line, then all of those are solutions to that inequality. And all of the points that are above points that are on the line will all solve this inequality. Okay? So we'll make this faster for this one. It's got a y-intercept of 8. It's got a slope of negative 5, negative 5, 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Two, three, four, five, six. It's tricky, and it's uh, equal to. So we do include the line, right? If I take points off that line, let me erase this other guy. So it's not confusing. If I take points off that line, it'll make both sides equal, and that is okay, right? It does have that equal to. Where should we shade? Well, the y value needs to be less than, so we would shade below. I'm just going to go ahead and stop my shading right here, even though technically for the orange guy, all this stuff is included as well. But we want a solution to the system of inequalities, and to be really neat and tidy, I should just erase all of this stuff. If you didn't, that's fine. So there it is. The, the system of inequalities it only includes like the the lines are the dotted lines, and the shaded area that overlaps. Um, if uh, you left that extra stuff, like I said, that's fine. Okay, so plot negative 7, 5. Um, uh, is it going to be hard? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 
six, seven, one, two, three, four, five. So there's the point, negative seven, five. Is it a solution to the system? Well, if I plug it into uh, the purple, if I plug it into the purple, then um, the y value would be bigger than the value I get over here, okay? Uh, so it would work. I'll show you that, and I, then I won't show you for the, the orange one, but I'll show you for this one. Negative 7, 5. Okay. So 5 for y. 7 for x. Negative 7 for x. 5. Just looking to see if this is true. This is negative 21 halves. Minus 6. You got a negative minus a number. That's going to be negative, which is definitely smaller than a positive number. So we're definitely on the right track. We're definitely going to be true here. But negative 21 halves minus 12 halves is 5 greater than negative 33 halves. Of course it is. It is true. If we were to plug that into the, the, uh, this orange one here, then it would also be true. You can see it's, it's part of that shaded area. So yeah, that's kind of what this shaded area was designed to communicate, uh, that it is a solution. So yes, it's a solution. It's in the shaded area of both, in the shaded area of both, both inequalities. Uh, here we go, uh, 6, 3, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, comma, 3. Ah, that looks good, it looks like maybe it's a solution, because it's on this line, this line is solid, right? Any point that I pick from this line will make both sides of this guy equal, and that's fine, because we have this equals to here. Oh, but it's on this dotted line. If I choose that, we actually did it earlier, 6, 3, it made both sides equal, which is not okay because there's no equals there. Right? So it's on, the, it's on the solid line, but it's also on the dotted line. And uh, points on the dotted line are not solutions to this inequality. So no, on the dotted line. If it's on the dotted line, it's not going to work in the inequality that that dotted line belongs to. Uh, that's why we dot it, because the points from on that dotted line do not work in that inequality. Right. When solving factoring, uh, there's an important principle we use, zero product property. It goes a little something like this. A times B equals zero, A and B are real numbers. Either A equals B, or A equals zero, or B equals zero. So why can we say that for sure? Right. The only way to multiply and get a product of zero is to multiply by zero. No way it can happen otherwise. Here's the counter, you know, like a, a contrast. Uh, a times B equals 24, so we say A equals 24, B equals 24. Well, what if A equals 3 and B equals 8? A is not 24, B is not 24. It's not no guarantee that A or B is 24. It could be. A could be 24 and B could be 1. But then, you know, that's not the only possibility. But it is the only possibility if the product is 0. OK, solve the system algebraically. I'm going to go with my gut here at first. Well, what does the solution to the system mean? It means that there's some x and y that works in both of the equations. If that's true, then this y and this y are the same. This x and this x are the same. Okay, So if this y is the same as this y, and this y is 3 minus 3x, and this x is the same as this x, then we should be able to just take this and substitute it right in there. We get 12x uh, minus 5 times 3 minus 3x equals negative 24. 12x minus 15 plus 15x equals negative 24. Uh, we put those like terms together, and we get 27x minus 15 equals negative 24. We add 15 on both sides, 27x equals negative 9 divided by 7, or sorry, 27, and x is negative 1 third. There's x. So that's part of it. That's half the solution. What do we do to figure out the rest of it? We plug in negative one third. Y equals three minus three times negative one third. Y equals three. Negative three times negative one third is positive one, so it's four.
one negative one third and four that's the x and the y that work in both equations all right here it is the, the word problems oh, the dreaded word problems um, they're not they're not that big a deal but the best thing you could do is to first decide what it is you are looking for what are you looking for what is the thing that is the mystery okay so mall kiosk so I picture a mall with a kiosk there that's one of those little stands that's not quite a store uh, but it just sits there and they sell things so they sell iPhone cases I'm sure you've seen a kiosk like that and I got Star Wars cases for six dollars plain cases for 450 okay I'm getting an idea I've seen two different cases uh, one costs one price the other another price one week kiosk sold 268 cases that's pretty good and made a total of one thousand five hundred sixty six dollars okay write a system of equations uh, to represent the situation, solve the system to find how many Star Wars cases the kiosk sold. Okay. Um, I would hope that you know that you need two equations to solve this. Right? I can't write one equation and, and solve it because I have two different things that I don't know. So f again, first, the first thing that I want to uh, know, figure out is what is it that I'm trying to find? What am I trying to find? Am I trying to find the number of miles traveled? Trying to find the number of gallons? Uh, for a number of eggs, for a recipe, like what am I trying to figure out, right? Uh, and another uh, way of saying it, we got x and y. What will they represent? Let's look at the question. Uh, how many Star Wars cases did the kiosk sell? How many ki how many cases, right? How many cases? Number of let's say Star Wars cases. And how about why? Well, they must be the number of the other kind of cases, number of plain cases. All right. Um, all right, good. That's good to know. Good to know. What do I know about these cases? I know that I sold a certain number at six dollars a piece and four fifty a piece, and altogether I made one thousand five hundred sixty-six. I also know that uh, altogether there were two hundred sixty-eight cases sold. The funny thing is, I. Th that the equation involving this, I think, is the one that showed up the least often on, on the quests. So um, let's write an equation involving uh, 268. How do we get 268? How do we find the total number of cases that were sold? It's very simple. Uh, we sold x number of Star Wars plus y number of plane, and altogether 268 cases were sold. OK, now this other one. Um, to find a relationship between all this, is just imagine like that you sold uh, 20 Star Wars cases and you sold uh, 30 plane cases. Okay, just making it up, just pretending. Like, how would you find the total cost of that? Uh, well, I take six dollars and I multiply by 20, right? Six dollars per Star Wars case times 20 Star Wars cases plus uh, 450 times 30 plane cases, and, and that's how I would find my answer, right? Um, what if there's, erase these, what if we change the number of Star Wars cases? What if we sold 15 of these and 25 of these, and then we change this to 15 and this to 25? Notice if you keep rewriting a, a, a quantity, that's your variable because it varies, it changes. Uh, so for any number of Star Wars cases and any number of plane cases, we'll always just take 6 times the number of Star Wars cases plus 450 times the number of plane cases. Now, I don't know how many I sold of each, but I do know that the total came out to be 1,566. So. Now we have two equations. Two equations is pretty key to solving a system with two variables. If you don't know how to write your equation, just throw made up numbers in there and see how you manipulate those numbers. And if you know how to manipulate those numbers, you, you know how to write the equation, right? If you put the number of Star Wars cases here and the number of plane cases here. Well, the number of Star Wars cases is represented by x, plane cases by y. There we go. 
Uh, how to solve this? I uh, probably solve this most often, so I'll go ahead and do this. If we multiply this by negative 6, then we get a 6x. We get the opposite here, so we get negative 6x minus 6y equals negative, I don't know what that is, 268 times 6. Right, so it would be negative 1,608. We add them together, we get negative 2.5 equals um, 1566 minus 1608. And then negative 42. Oh, that shouldn't say y. Negative, oh gosh, did it say 42? What was that? Negative 42. Divide by negative 2.5. 2.5 and y equals uh, divided by negative 2.5. Um, let's see what we do around here. Uh, oh, well, that should have been a 1.5. Thank you for catching that. 1.5. So negative 42 divided by negative 1.5. 28. Okay, why is 28? Does that mean that's my answer? It says, how many Star Wars cases did it sell? Oh, that's the plane. How do I figure out the Star Wars cases? Well, I have, here's an equation. Uh, I know that if I take the Star Wars plus the uh, plane cases, I get 268. So Star Wars plus plane cases equals 268. X equals 240, it looks like. 240 Star Wars cases. Okay, let's see, we know an equation can have a solution. For instance, given a s give a solution to the following equation. A solution just means an x and a y that makes the equation true. So if I'm not sure, I can just throw anything I want in there for x. I'm going to throw in 0 for x, because that makes life easy. So my solution will be x is 0, y is something else. Well, this is 0 divided by negative 2, and y is negative 3. All right, so what's a system of equations? It's just multiple equations. Here is an equation, a system of equations, uh, is a bunch of equations, right? Um, it's a system of uh, pipes would be a, a bunch of pipes put together to work together as a system, a system of... Um, Of bikes, I don't know somehow it's a bunch of bikes put together to work together as one massive bike clump. Uh, a system of any objects is just a bunch of those objects put together. A uh, system of gears is a bunch of gears put together to work together as one big thing. A system of equations is just a multiple equations. Okay, done. Multiple equations. That's a system of equations. What does it mean to find a solution to a system of equations? Well, it means <coughs> to find. Um, an x and a y that makes all equations in the system true. There it is. That's a, that's a solution to a system of equations. Okay, solve by using factoring. Again, we need to have 0 on one side, so we'll subtract 40 from both sides and get that. And factor this, x and x. Two things that multiply to negative 40 add to make negative 3. Let's see, 4 and 10. Oh, well, we know one needs to be positive, one needs to be negative, right? Um, let's see. So like we said, 10 and 4 is not going to work. Um, let's see, 5 and 8. Eight. Well, that sounds good. Five and negative eight. Yeah, that multiplies to negative forty. Adds to make negative three. Again, we use our detective skills. We know zero happened, so we point at x plus five and we say you must have been zero. Or hey, you over there, x minus eight, you must have been zero. And the solution is x equals negative five or x equals eight. All right. Um, 
I should bring this up now, I guess. Uh, notice there's a solve, and then there's other um, problems that say to factor. Okay, here's the factoring. I was only able to solve it because it's an equation. Let me, you should find an example. Uh, solving, here's factoring. Okay, I can't solve this. It's not an equation. There's nothing to solve. There's no solution to find. There's nothing to make true. There's no truth to this or falseness to this. I would have to say this equals 0 or equals 5 or equals something in order for it to be solvable. I can't solve something that doesn't claim to be equal to something else. Right? There's no solution. There's nothing to satisfy. There's nothing to make true. So we just factor it, solving and saying, like, this is what x is. How do I know what x is? I don't know what this whole expression is supposed to come out to be. Uh, so I can't solve it. And likewise, if I'm asked to solve something, factoring it is not enough. I need to actually solve it, figure out what x is. Okay, So if you told me x plus 5 times x minus 8, I said, but what does x equal? That's what solving means. Right? What does x have to be so that the equation that you were given is true? Linear equations. Solve the or graph the linear system and, and estimate the solution. Okay. So um, this guy is going to be green. And uh, I'll put a 0 in for y, 0 for x. Uh, I'll find uh, two points that way. So I get x is 2. And y is negative 5. All right, so if I want to continue this line, I could just go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 over 2. Continue this guy like that. Okay, we're going to graph this one. Um, the, let's see, the y-intercept, I put a 0 in there. And then 32 divided by 4 is going to be 8. So I put that guy right there. Um, if I solve for the x-intercept, that is... So maybe we should just put in slope-intercept form. 4y equals negative 3x plus 32 divided by 4, negative 3 fourths x plus 8. So we'll just go down 3, 1, 2, 3, and over 4. Yeah, look, that lands right on that uh, another point that we graphed in the other one. OK. Uh, what is this? Estimate the solution. Uh, if I go on to read here, it tells me what to do. Just look for where they intersect. Okay, that's not what I'm interested in, really. It looks like they intersect at 4 or 5. But why does that point represent the solution to the system of equations? Um, well, I guess I should have really quickly changed this to red and uh, this to red as well. Okay, so if, if I'm talking about this red line, uh, choose any point from it, put it that x and that y in here, true, right? So this point, I choose that x and that y, I plug it into the equation, it's true. I take that x and that y, plug it into the equation, it's true. I take this x and this y, this x and this y. Any x and y on this red line solves the red equation, makes the red equation true. How about this point? This one works, right? It's on the red line. It's also on the green line, right? So that's an x and a y that also uh, satisfies this green equation. So why does it represent that? Because uh, we can say it gives an x comma y that make both equations true. That's about as little as I need to know. Um, solve this algebra. Okay, so how are we going to solve this system? Uh, maybe multiply this by a negative 3 so that I get a negative 15. I like that idea. Okay, so I get negative 15x plus 6y equals negative 3 times, neg uh, times 13 is negative 39. Okay, and it's going to cancel out these x's, right? So I'm going to add that all together. I'm going to get uh, those eliminate, and I'm going to get... 0y equals 0. That's the most troubling part, right? That the, the, both y's cancel each other out and both x's cancel each other out. What do I make of this? Okay, well, a solution to the system is an x and a y that work in both of 
the equations. Think about what we normally have happen here. Is like we'd find a y, we plug that y back in, and find the x, and then we're done. But what it, there is no y to solve for here. It's like it's not y equals zero. It's zero y equals zero. Well, what you know? If I'm looking for x and y, what y have I found? Well, what y will work here? What y will work here? Because it's equal to zero, zero times whatever I put here is zero. Okay, so anything, any y won't work. Right, like two will work, five will work, seven will work, any y will work. And for any y, I can plug that y in and find an x. So there's an infinite number of x's and y's that will solve the system. Infinite. Let's look at uh, real quick why exactly. Um, if we multiply this just by three, we'll get fifteen x minus six y equals thirty nine. What's the other equation? It's fifteen x minus six y equals thirty nine. We know these are, these would say graph lines. We could look at it that way. They would both graph lines. They would graph the exact same line, exactly the same, and they would be right on top of each other. They, like, and and what's the solution to a system? Well, in, in graphic terms, it's where the two lines cross. They're crossing everywhere. Every point that is on this line is on this line. They share every point. Right. So any point that works in this equation works in this equation, and vice versa. So there's an infinite number. Now, just real quickly, it's because some this other thing can happen. What if we got like 0y equals 5? Well, now there's no way that there's a y that works in this equation. Right? There's no way to take 0 times something, uh, 0 times something, and get 5. It's impossible. Right? That can happen, and that's when we would say no solutions. There's no way to find a y that will work. Usually, we find a y that works, and we use that y to find x. Okay? In this case, any y we choose, choose 7. Right? Actually, choose 7, do it. And so 7 is y, you take 7, plug it back in there, solve for x, you'll find some x, right? And that x and y that you find, try plugging it in here, it'll work. Uh, try 5, try 7, try 12, negative 3, like any y will work, any y will give you an x, and that x and y that works in here will work in here as well. So infinite solutions. That's what we have there. Okay, so now we have another, another word problem. And uh, we want to write this word problem. Let's see, 60 friends. First, again, let's try and figure out what we're trying to um, solve for. Some Jedi, some Siths. There are a certain number of Siths compared to the number of Jedi. System equations, solve system. And uh, find the number of Jedi. So our X and our Y, like X must represent, like, say, say Jedi. Number of Jedi. And y must represent the number of Siths. Okay. Uh, so, how do we approach this problem? Let's see. There is x number of Jedi, y number of Siths. There were 60 people all together, right? However many Jedis or Siths, we would do it if I told you there was 20 Jedi and 40 Siths. You add them together, you get 60, right? Why do, I don't know what those specific numbers, but I do know I would add the two together and get 60. And here's this other equation. Three times as many Siths as Jedi. Okay, so with this one, just think, uh, I know how to calculate this. If there were like, fifth, uh, say, uh, whatever, 20. If there are 20, 20 Jedi, how many Siths would there be? Let's say, okay, three times as many Siths as Jedi. That tells me there's more Siths than Jedi. There's three times as many Siths. Like, I would take the Jedi, I'd multiply by 3, right, Jedi, and that would give me 60 Siths. Well, that doesn't work. I can't have 60 Siths because there's some Jedi uh, there, right? And uh, so, no, that's, that's not it. Uh, yeah, 60 plus 20, that, that didn't even come out to be 60. That, that doesn't work. Um, let's see. But I do know, like, anytime you give me Jedi, I'll multiply it by 3, whatever you tell me the number of Jedi is, and that'll give me the number of Siths. Well, now I know that uh, I will take 3 
times Jedi, which is represented by X according to what we wrote here, and that gives me the number of Siths. Um, so my instinct would be to say that Y is uh, equal to 3X, so replace this with 3X. X plus 3X equals 60. Uh, 4X equals 60. Divide by 4, we get 15. Okay, is that what we're looking for? X is Jedi. Find the number of Jedi. So it happens. We found it. 15 Jedi. Great. Okay, I think uh, last three here. Solve this system. Okay, let's uh, I'm gonna multiply this one so that I get a positive 12y. I'm gonna multiply this by negative three. All right, it's so our new system. We'll write it over here. Three x minus 12y equals 15. Just rewriting that first equation. Multiply this by negative three. We get negative 15x positive 12y. Negative three times 13 is negative 39. Okay, so these cancel just like we planned. And we get negative 12x equals negative um, 24. So we divide by negative 12 and x is 2. So that's half of it. That's half of our solution. Now we just need to figure out y is. We can plug it back in. I'll plug it back into this equation here. So 5 times 2 minus 4y equals 13. 10 minus 4y equals 13. Negative 4y equals... Uh, 3, and we divide by 4 on both sides, negative 4, and we get negative 3 fourths. Negative 3 fourths. There we go. And in fact, this expression, all right, you know, if I had this version of the test, you'd think, like, oh, that's nice, like, one of the easier questions at the end here. Uh, I got x times x gives me the x squared, something times something gives me 9, and that same something and something adds to 6. Didn't take us long before we try 3 and 3. x plus 3 times x plus 3, that will give me 3 times 3 is 9. And 3x plus 3x is 6x. All right, so uh, I can even write it as x plus 3 times itself, right, squared. So that works. I'm going to multiply this out. I'm going to show you the long way. Uh, and you can do it the short way if you want. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this here, distribute it, to both of these things. So I get 3x times 2x plus 6. Right? I distributed that to the 3x. And now I get minus 5 times 2x plus 6. Distributed it to both of those terms. Now how do I multiply these together? Well, I distribute the 3x to both of these. So I get 6x squared plus 18x minus 10x minus 30. Like terms right here, 6x squared plus 8x minus 30. And we're done. 6x squared minus plus 8x minus 30. Nothing to solve for. Can't solve it. Uh, not equal to anything. We're done. Um, I believe that was it. That was it. Okay. So I uh, hope that was helpful. I hope that gets you ready for a retech if you're planning on doing that. Uh, come to me. Ask me any questions you have. Thanks for watching.